Salutations, Secret Black Side Security Forces, Automatic here for Automatic Games. Thank you for joining me for Season 1, Episode 14 of our XCOM 2 series. So here it is, the season finale. A moment we've been building toward over the course of 13 episodes. We are finally going to infiltrate the Advent Black Site installation located in Mexico. And granted, um, there will be more Black Sites in our future. But nonetheless, this is an important moment that we've been certainly working toward. There's a lot of scuttlebutt, a lot of talk amongst the troops aboard the Avenger regarding this mission. Bravo Squad will be conducting the operation themselves. They will be commanded in the field by Colonel Van Dorn personally. Now, a lot of planning has gone into this op, and I can tell you that I've only played one Black Site mission previously, and I know that the maps are randomly generated, but going off of the limited experience I have, I've developed this, this plan. It is my hope that it works, and that we can get every member of Bravo back aboard the Avenger alive at day's end. And we do anticipate heavy resistance, but we are going to employ a lot of stealth. Uh, that is key for this mission. And so here they are, Bravo Squad, again commanded by uh, Peter Van Dorn, codenamed Wolverine, carrying a mag rifle, an art blade, and a hand grenade. And Bravo Squad's normal leader, William Lee, codenamed Weasel, also carrying a mag rifle and an art blade, but a flashbang instead of a hand grenade. He is joined as usual by Joan Richards, codenamed J-Bone, as squad medic she'll be taking a med kit and her mag rifle. Mark Jackson, codenamed Stonewall, the squad sniper is of course bringing his sniper rifle, the Shadow Keeper, and a hand grenade. And as usual, Otto Williams, codenamed Automatic. He'll be taking a mag rifle, arc blade, and the mimic beacon. And finally, Jared Williamson, codenamed Manzer. He'll be taking his heavy machine gun, a grenade launcher, the frost bomb, and a hand grenade. And there you have it, Bravo Squad, as it stands for this mission. They're all wearing black, because we'll be moving out in early evening. With no further ado, Bravo, you may board when ready. It was a concern of Weasel's that he'd have to dress in khaki for this mission, but Van Dorn assured him that they'd all be dressing in black. You're deployed. We're in the pipe, five by five. Copy that, Firebrand. Begin your descent immediately. Our contacts in the local resistance have shown us how to access the Advent Black site. The aliens worked hard to keep this place under the radar. And we don't know what we're gonna find in there. Keep your heads up. Expect heavy opposition. For the individual member of Bravo Squad, there's no getting around wearing every accoutrement Van Dorn expects one to wear. Namely because he'll be joining him on this mission. And so failure to do so would obviously result in a write-up, which nobody really wants. One can imagine that if it were just Weasel commanding, uh, the average trooper would be at liberty to tear the sleeves off his uniform, chuck the helmet, and whatever else. After all, Weasel is a pretty amicable guy, and he's not big on discipline. So anyhow, everyone's prepared for what awaits them. And again, it's my hope that everybody comes back alive. Bravo Squad, is boots on the ground. Let's talk tactics. Van Dorn here is going to break off to the right, and he is going to operate independent from the rest of the command. Meanwhile, Weasel is going to lead the remainder of Bravo Squad directly ahead. Initially, they're going to gain access to this first roof. See, we have no interest in infiltrating any of these buildings save for the one that contains the objective, and frankly, that's going to fall on Van Dorn to infiltrate that particular building. And I know it may sound like I'm putting all my eggs in one basket, and I am. And though Van Dorn is OP when compared to the rest of the soldiers, I'm keenly aware that he's not unstoppable. 
Uh, he doesn't have that much health, to be honest. And all it would take is one Viper encounter. And if she were to bound him, well, he'd be finished. After all, the rest of Bravo Squad won't be in his vicinity. They won't be there to rescue him from the hold. So yes, this whole plan could go sideways. But... We're willing to take the risk. Now Weasel and the remainder of the command. Once they're past this roof, they're gonna break off to the left. They're gonna go around most of this facility and basically stop their progress at the extraction point. Once they reach the extraction point, they're gonna take positions and go into Overwatch. Ultimately, they're gonna cover Van Dorn as he makes his withdrawal from the objective facility. See, once he captures the objective, the alarm will raise. Advent will start throwing everything they have at him. And that's when we anticipate going loud. Understood. Move All the while, we're aware that we could go loud prior to that. Looks like hostiles over here. We're already showing two on the grid, one sectoid, and one mech. There. Now there's a lot of what-ifs. You know, as I stated, Van Dorn could run into a Viper. That's the worst thing he could run into, to be honest. Are those bodies? The, the containers, the trains, this entire facility. The aliens are still abducting people. From the looks of it, they may never have stopped after the invasion. Those containers look like they have self-contained power cells. It could be some kind of stasis system. It's possible at least some of those people might still be alive. Bravo's position could be compromised. Got it. That would be horrible. Um, granted, if that were to happen, they would serve as a bit of a distraction. And Van Dorn could still proceed to the objective. He just wouldn't have that cover there at the end, which I think will be necessary. Um, but, you know, I, we will see how it unfolds. Copy that. I'm employing as much caution as possible. And you know, earlier I talked about having a plan. And on the one hand, you could take that in the sense of like story, you know, for story's sake. It's easy to accept that XCOM senior officers have been ironing out the details of this plan for some time. But then there's the other way in which you could take it and the other way in which I meant it, which was that I was planning this for some time. And by that, you know, I don't mean that... I guess you could say, like, you know, it's a random map. How could you plan for this ahead of time to without, units. like, engaging in save scum or using the camera to pan over the whole map or something like that? And, one, I'm not engaging in save scum. If I do, when and if I do, I will tell you. And, two, you can't really... I mean, you can pan over the map... But it's not going to afford you much insight because uh, the bulk of the map is shrouded by the fog of war. So it's not like I can just pan over the map and then sleep on it. Uh, no. What I mean by preparing for it or by hashing out a plan is uh, the technological advances that we made leading up to it. And this looks like the end of the line, at least for this area. Good to go. For instance, we recently unlocked Lightning Strike. That allows each squad member to move three additional spaces initially for the first few rounds, um, as long as they're in concealment. Now, as you can see, the Sectoid's looking at our last position. I mean, we are probably only three steps ahead of them, so I really feel like Lightning Strike has paid off. I also wanted to make sure that we had magnetic weapons and that we, we had the Mimic Beacon, because I feel like the Mimic Beacon is going to come in handy when the alarms are raised. Uh, we're definitely going to use it should the situation go loud. Heading to that location. So yeah, Van Dorn is going to, he's going to flank to the right. The rest of Bravo flanks to the left. Now, as we've done with both Charlie and Alpha, I want to briefly discuss the dynamics of Bravo Squad. They have a reputation for being laid-back, easy-going individuals. And let's start with Weasel. 
His file says that he's one of the most well-liked members of XCOM. And what does he think of Bravo Squad? Well, he's carved out time from his schedule to associate with, uh, be receptive to, and quote-unquote hang out with each of his subordinates at one time or another. And the deference that they show him in return is likely unequivocated. And Weasel's not a boastful man. You know, when it comes to Alpha or Charlie, their squad leaders are constantly trying to sell them to Senior Command. You know, when there's a mission up for grabs. And if someone from Senior Command were to ask Weasel, hey, why aren't you constantly boasting about the merits and the, and the acclaim that the Bravo Squad deserves? I would like to think that Weasel would respond by saying, why would I boast about Bravo Squad? Actions speak louder than words. Have you looked at their record? This because he strikes me as the soul of humility. Now, his subordinates don't like him because his file says he's well liked. Though that doesn't hurt. I think they have deeper motivations and let's start with Otto. Otto's late father served in the XCOM program. In other words, he served alongside Weasel. And so Otto would like nothing more and likes nothing more than to pick at Weasel's brain, attempting to extract stories about his late father, which I would imagine Weasel is all too obliged to share. And so that, of course, would uh, make Weasel someone that Otto respects immensely. After all, it's one of his dad's old buddies. Then you've got Manzer. And when Manzer's not drinking himself into a hole, he's teaching refugees how to read and write. And to do this, he needs reading material. And he need look no further than his squad leader. After all, Weasel is the official uh, XCOM historian. Got it covered. And so, you know, with this vast library at his disposal, Manzer can just go to him to borrow material. And I think just as a result of that, it's brought the two of them closer together, and they also share the same uh, birthplace. Well, not exactly, but they're both from Ohio. Manzer's from Cleveland, and Weasel is from Columbus, so they're not exact. They weren't exactly next door neighbors. Plus, there's that generation gap, but they could always swap stories about their home state. Next, of course, we've got uh, J Bone. This is a big one. J Bone, her file says that when she was a child, Atlanta came under attack by the alien threat, and she and her brother were rescued by XCOM forces. Well, the squad that rescued her was commanded by Weasel. And so, in a way, he remains a surrogate father inside. figure to her. And so, obviously, she, uh, she absolutely adores the man, and her file talks about her strong sense of loyalty, and I'm absolutely positive that that would extend to her squad leader. And last of all, you've got Stonewall. And Stonewall, he came up in, uh, what is it, Missouri. That's right, he came up, he basically, uh, had, his mentors were former U.S. military that came from Fort Leonard Wood. These old grizzled army vets that taught him everything he needed to know to survive. And Weasel definitely smacks of that old school military style, being a veteran of the invasion of 2015, having that gray beard and that very Vietnam veteran style about him. And I think that endears him to Stonewall, who sees in Weasel much of what he saw in these guys that, that raised him. And so, for these reasons, every member of Bravo Squad immensely respects their leader. And frankly, I, I don't think anybody could blame them. And this doesn't make Bravo Squad the best squad to be fielded. To be perfectly pragmatic and honest, Alpha Squad probably is considered by Senior Command the more elite of the three squads. But every squad has their benefits, and every squad has their hindrances. For Bravo, I like to think that because they're not boasted about, they're sort of like the forgotten squad. But they're damn good nonetheless. And, frankly, I hope that's demonstrated in this mission, 
And I am going to rein in my narration a little bit, uh, because I'm kind of ranting at this point, so I'm going to focus back on the mission at hand. As you can see, Bravo has moved pretty deep along the left flank. They're actually getting to the point where they're almost behind the f facility. So they're going to perform a right oblique and cross this little creek um, and get in behind the facility pretty much uh, pretty much to where the extraction zone's supposed to be. Meanwhile, on the other side, Van Dorn, he's a... Uh, He's eluding the uh, patrols, and he's run into several while I've been talking about the dynamics of Bravo. And here, even back where Bravo's at, you can see some patrols are emerging from the installation itself. It's almost as if they know people are out there, but they just, uh, they just don't know their location. One thing I've, I've learned about going into stealth mode here, it seems as if the patrols are very slowly heading to the exact location where our concealed units are. However, it's slow. If, as long as we keep moving, we'll stay ahead of them. But I wonder about that. If these guys are concealed, then how do the patrols know to move in their general direction? I mean, is it an anti-camping mechanism? And if so, that sucks. I should be able to post up a sniper and camp all the live long day without fear of an advent patrol haphazardly encroaching on our position. Or maybe, maybe it's a, uh, a matter of them hearing us. You know, much in the way that we can hear them sometimes from across the battlefield. But if that's the case, it very much defeats the purpose of, of utilizing concealment anyways. I mean, if we're being so stealthy, why are we so loud? Anyhow, it's a it's a it's one source of frustration for me. And it's even in this mission it's becoming increasingly frustrating for me to realize that these patrols are just following us around the map, albeit slow, albeit at a zombie's pace. Um it's just not something I'm too fond of. It's uh and, and see look it's manifesting itself right here. It's, it's, you know, these guys are coming right at us. And they won't stop. Mark my word, they will continue their approach unabated. I don't know. It, uh, I'm at a loss for words, folks. Which I know is rare. But, oh, you know what? That makes me think of something else. Um... You'll pardon me if I go on one more tangent, uh, but a few times over the past few months, I have been asked by multiple people how long it takes me to script one of these episodes. And while I'm flattered by that sentiment, at the same time, I I'm a little taken aback by it because these aren't scripted. On it. And, uh, I, I don't know how else I can... I, I don't know that I can prove that to you, but... But no, my, this stuff isn't scripted. Uh, an exception would be what? Uh, season 4 of my Fallout videos? The, the season with Brian Wilkes? Well, that was scripted. And that, in part, that's why I stopped doing that season. Um, and the pre-recorded stuff you hear, like the Boatswain's Call, and uh, the, the file audio, like when you're looking at a troop's file, that's scripted. But as far as my narration... Not so much. And in fact, uh, most recently, one guy, one of my Xbox Live friends, and I'm not going to call you out, man, but... And, and I, I don't take offense to this either. You know, if anything, I take it as a compliment, but, uh, but one guy asked me... Well, he didn't ask. He said, when watching your videos, I can really tell when you're on script and then when you deviate from the script. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself... Dude, if that's the case, then I'm always deviating from the script, because there is no script. But, again, I take it as a compliment. I just wanted to clarify. And I guess, you know, those of you that know me in real life, you probably know about Spinwash All-Stars. Location confirmed. Well, I mean, that, I rest my case. So 
many victims. Processed with such brutal efficiency. Test subjects for some sort of weapon, perhaps. Looks more like a refinery to me, Doctor. Once we get our hands on that sample, we'll know for sure. I'm with Shen. It looks like a refinery. And the main resource is abducted people. That's horrible. Um... Spinwash All-Stars. That. Yeah, that was, a, that was a band I was a part of, and I was the vocalist for it. And it was a, mostly an improv band. I mean, we'd go do Let's shows do and we'd pass around in notepad, and we'd have members of the audience go ahead and write a word or a phrase, and then they would pass it back up to the stage, and we would do a song utilizing all those words, and I would make it rhyme, and we would implement a chorus that I would have to go back to. And I had no problem doing it. I just, I like doing improv. And when we weren't doing that, uh, we, uh, we'd get a magazine and rip an article out and basically do a song about that article. And I'd paraphrase so that it rhymed. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was all on a whim. It was all impromptu and it was a whole hell of a lot of fun. I wish we still did it, but you know, seeing as we could do that at a moment's notice, at the drop of a hat, um, it's, it shouldn't be a far cry for you to believe that this narration is, is far from scripted. If anything, occasionally I'll mess up and re-record the narration, and at least then I, I kind of have like a general idea as to what I want to say, but that's as close to scripted as I get. Well, folks, I'm going to get back on topic now. It does appear that our stealthy approach has come to a conclusion. Um, I say that because indeed this patrol has caught up to us and certain elements of Bravo Squad cannot move without being seen. So unfortunately we are about to go loud. But I must say that our plan has uh, it's really moved along flawlessly up until this point. Indeed the bulk of Bravo Squad is at the extraction point, and Van Dorn has eyes on the objective. That's, that's that's really what we wanted to affect. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm I'm not too happy that the squad spotted us, but what we're gonna do is throw some units into Overwatch. Then we'll have Manzer open up with the frost bomb. He'll freeze this patrol. Now, granted, there is that other patrol with a Mutant inside. In fact, what do we have? Six on the grid. Um. We've got this mech, he's got two troopers with him. Again, I'm assigning a gender to a robot. But uh, here goes nothing, we're going loud. Catch. And they're frozen. And then on the inside we have a Mouton and I believe two stun Lancers. So of course those guys are going to spring into action. Damn, they're focusing on Van Dorn, so apparently he has uh, broken concealment. I didn't realize uh, that that would be an issue. Well, he can go right back into concealment, though, unless, of course, they can literally, literally see him, which I hope is not the case. It appears that it is not. So now that he's back in concealment, hopefully that Mouton and the two Stun Lancers will focus their attention on Bravo instead. And they are. Sort of. Well, damn. This, this could get complicated. Ideally, we want them to focus on Bravo so that Van Dorn can go inside and get that damn objective. Okay. So, we, uh, we're gonna start with Manzer. Um, no, oh, actually... Decisions, decisions. Yep. We are gonna throw a flashbang and try to uh, make sure that that Mouton is disoriented. And it is. Position compromised. So that'll allow us a little more freedom. Um, he was in Overwatch, so uh, we are avoiding that. Have Manzer open up on the mech. 
decent damage and uh, a little bit shredded to boot. Next, we will have, um, let's see. J-Bone is going to reposition. I'd love to take out that Mouton. But no, it's too tough a shot. Oh, it doesn't matter, she misses anyway. Yeah. Yeah, she might as well have fired at the Mouton. Which is an enemy asset that we need to remove from this battlefield. And to that end, uh, Jackson is going to advance. Let's move already. And he is going to deploy a hand grenade with the full intention of getting rid of that Mouton's cover. Frag Which... Up. Wait. Damn it. Okay. So a slight miscalculation on my part. It didn't do anything to the Mouton's cover. You know, maybe he frightened it, though. Now. One can hope. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to that hope. So, um... As to Otto, he is, uh... You know... Actually, he's gonna deploy that Mimic Beacon. Go ahead and uh, toss it over here. And that should serve as a potent distraction to our adversaries. In fact, I think the uh, Mimic Beacon will take targeting priority over our troopers. I guess we'll find out momentarily. Well, we just, we didn't act quick enough to stop that mech or the two troopers over there. And so they are back in motion and firing uh, at the Mimic Beacon, much to my delight. Watch the flanks! One soldier is taking a shot. Uh, who was that at? Weasel? No, it was at uh, Otto. Either way, it's no good. Bhutan also uh, doing some damage to the Mimic Beacon, which is irrelevant damage. And fortunately, the Stun Lancers are sallying forth with the full intention of vanquishing the uh, Mimic Beacon, which vanquished itself. So, uh, fruitless endeavor, folks. Manzer is gonna find. Well, actually. Um, so many things to shoot at. You know what? Yeah. I'm gonna shoot at that guy out in the open. And it's good. Nailed him. So we've got five on the grid. One stunt lancer, two troopers, uh, a mech out there. It's not really on the grid, it's kind of hidden. Weasel's gonna put down this stunt lancer. And he does. Did you see that one? And then, of course, we've also got the Mouton just peeking out that window over there. Uh, J-Bone, she doesn't want to get shot by the Mouton, so she's going to go around this cup. Oh. That trooper was in Overwatch. Damn, I need to pay better attention. Well, what mission would be complete without J-Bone getting wounded? And she evens the score. Enemy down. Actually, if we're keeping score, we're way ahead. But uh, you get the thrust of what I what I meant to say there. You know, if this were scripted, I wouldn't have said that. Okay, so Otto has established contact with the mech, and good night. Enemies down. And the mech is a wreck. Okay, Stonewall. He is going to go ahead and reposition. If at all possible, yeah. Yeah, he's going to move up here to an elevated position. So he's, uh, got good oversight over the battlefield. As to Van Dorn, I think it's about time that he enter the fray. 
and he's gonna open up this door and hopefully make that Mouton poop itself. You heard the doctor. Secure that canister. So, uh, Van Dorn's gonna utilize up, run and gun down. and get a little closer. On the move! They've got eyes on me. And then he's, uh, he's also got an ability that will allow him to take two shots. Granted, with a slight aim penalty, the first one's good, the second one is bad. Damn, okay, the Mouton's holding on. I really wanted to put that down, but it was not to be. Uh, the trooper repositions, foolishly goes into Overwatch, Mouton is getting close. Um... Okay, I I didn't realize Van Dorn had that ability, but I'll take it. Nice. So what does that leave? Just one on the grid? The trooper? You're done, son. Thanks for playing. And so now I, I think that We'll go ahead and put people into Overwatch, including Stonewall. Um... Scanning. I guess the one exception would be J-Bone. She can go ahead and... She's gonna maneuver and then heal herself. Moving out. Yep. Fulfill her role as Dr. Feelgood. And as the Wolverine, or rather Van Dorn, he's going to approach the objective vial and get it. Asset secure. Guessing that's not water in there. Shen, any readings? No signs of radioactivity, no significant energy signatures of any kind. Whatever it is, it's safe to handle. We've confirmed acquisition of the sample. Move to rendezvous at the extraction point. Advent forces moving on our position! Okay, here comes the cavalry. Um, Van Dorn's gonna stay put momentarily, and Manzer is gonna make him a brand new exit. Moving on target. Like so. Grenade out! So Van Dorn will exit via that new hole in the wall and find himself reunited with Bravo Squad. Though not in ideal cover. And here they come. Into the fire. These boys don't know what they're in for. Forces on the ground. Translation? Oh, hell. <laughs> yep, they're moving. The officer is injured and dead. Stonewall puts him down. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> sure did. Sure did. Okay, is it our turn now? <laughs> there we go. Well, that lone, presumably frightened Advent Trooper is out there behind minimal cover. And Stonewall is going to take a flanking shot. And by doing so, he takes the trooper down. Who's keeping score? I'm keeping score, and I, I believe that's two. As to the rest of Bravo Squad, they're going to position themselves behind moderate to full cover, and they're going to go into Overwatch. The enemy mech is uh, not in a position where it has direct line of sight on any of our elements, so it's going to have to maneuver to establish any kind of contact, 
and in doing so, we hope that it will trigger our Overwatch and it'll come under a, a hailstorm of fire. Now, the one exception to this may be, um, maybe Van Dorn, seeing as he does have the vial that is the objective, so, yeah, we're, if he can reach it, we're gonna pull him over to the extraction zone and get him the hell out of here. Go, go, go! And he can. Get out of here! And so Van Dorn, along with the asset, is away. Avenger, this is Firebrand. Package is secure. Now let's see what that mech does. It can't possibly uh, stand its ground. No, it's moving all right. Panzer opens up. It's a miss. Weasel. Also a miss. J-Bone just misses as well. Otto scores a hit, all right. And the mech, very naively, goes into Overwatch. What is up with this enemy AI? I mean, I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. So yeah, we're gonna have um, Stonewall put the mech down. Which he does. I had every confidence that he'd hit. You want some more? I I don't know that we can give them any more. Um, that I that was the last man, or well, rather the last machine standing. So, time. so the grid is clear. Otto is going to extract, and just behind him, we'll have a uh, Joan. Ex extract because to frankly because although she passed herself up in the field uh, the fact good. remains she is wounded so now she is away and then uh, Manser Affirmative. Moving out. Weasel on the other hand he is going to remain in the field he insists upon being the last element of Bravo Squad out of the area of operations, so he's gonna stand by until, uh, until Jackson's away. We've got one sectoid on the grid. Uh, let me revise that. One sectoid, two stun lancers. And so, all right, Stonewall, we gotta move, bud. Tired of waiting around. But you know what? He gets a free pistol shot. And so, he wants to leave one of these stun lancers with a parting gift. And yet, he feels like that's inadequate. So why not double up the gift? Have another. <laughs> and while the Stun Lancer is still alive, he certainly has something to remember us by. I'm gone. Okay. With no further ado, Stonewall is away. And so now Weasel can board the Sky Ranger. I'll take one more glimpse at the battlefield. Let's go. And be gone. All surviving XCOM operatives are secure. Firebrand returning to base. Mission accomplished, Commander. We just hit Advent where it hurts. This was a place no living human being was ever intended to see. Happy as I am to see it gone. Something tells me the aliens won't take this line down. So I think our plan was flawless. I mean, granted, J-Bone was wounded, but... Honestly, I mean, things went better than I anticipated. In the end, one of those Advent patrols did intercept Bravo Squad. But it was so close to the end that we were virtually in the positions that we wanted to be in anyways. 
So yeah, I, I'm altogether pleased with the way all of that played out. Um, now, the sensitive information that we learned, it used to only be privy to uh, senior officers, uh, the commander, uh, Central Officer Bradford, Van Dorn, but now everybody in Bravo Squad realizes that people are still being abducted and taken to refineries such as the one we saw on this mission, where Advent is conducting God knows what experiments on them. There's definitely something nefarious going on with all the dead bodies, or bodies in stasis, 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 whatever. I'm certainly impressed, Commander. Another heroic effort in the field. Well, that's why we do what we do, Dr. Tigan, to impress you. Anyways, we do have a couple promotions to award. The first goes to Otto, who can choose between Shadow Strike or Shadow Step. Shadow Step is the ability to avoid enemy overwatch, but we're gonna go with Shadow Strike, the capability to inflict more damage when firing from a position of concealment. And the second promotion award goes to, drumroll, Manzer. He gets the chip. well, it's not a choice at all. So yeah, suppression it is. Why would you choose demolition, where you fire specifically at enemy cover? If you throw any kind of explosive, you both destroy the cover and damage the enemy. Somebody explain that to me. Bravo. Now that we've recovered the apparent product of the Black Site facility, I imagine it will take considerable time and resources to uncover the true purpose of this substance. I will begin preparations for a complete analysis immediately, Commander. And we also recovered a laser sight. And the capability to research alien encryption. Having now seen the inner workings of the Black Site facility, the outcome is perhaps even more troubling than I had expected. It is clear the aliens have undertaken a gruesome task. I will leave this matter for you to investigate, Commander. You can count on us, Mr. Spokesman. New objective added. Research alien encryption. Well, we certainly will. The aliens are relaying a form of encryption beyond anything we've ever encountered, much less theorized. We'll have to find a means of breaking the code, but I expect it will take some time. Yep. We should talk to that hustler running the black market. Maybe she can help us out restocking the bar. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt indeed. Um, I imagine that a vast majority of our personnel is going to be hitting the bar tonight. After all, we've, we've got to celebrate the events of the day, and what better way to celebrate than throwing a few back? You know, we've come a long way in this first season. From our limited scope, operating in and around Vancouver, to branching out into Mexico, and sacking an Advent Black Site. And one can presume there'll be more enemy Black Sites in our near future. So we can't afford to rest on our laurels, no. We must look ahead. And also, we have to investigate that signal from Dr. Valen, so we'll be doing that in Season 2 as well. You know, now that I think about it, uh, let's go ahead and check out the Geoscape. Now, I don't want to make any strategic moves at this time, uh, but I do want to see what's what. Got a few things on the board. An impressive effort, Commander. The destruction of their black site will no doubt slow the aliens' progress, but time is still short. Well, I'm all about undermining the uh, Avatar project. I wish we could have taken more than one, one dot off of that uh, meter, but oh well. Uh, we'll take what we can get. So yeah, that'll do it for Season 1. Again, the name of this season was Known Enemies. I'm not sure what the name of Season 2 will be yet, but we'll find out. And, uh, hey, there's Stonewall. He's not drinking with the rest of the gang. But he is drinking. But, rather, he's drinking all alone. Oh well, you know, he, he's had a long day. And we've had a long season, but it's come to a close. And I do appreciate you tuning in. 
As always, this is Automatic for Automatic Games. If you like this, like this. And if you are subscribed, I will talk to you soon, friends. Thanks for watching.